All right. Uh, so lately, as the world of computers continues to wend its way into the stereo photography world, the term depth map is heard more and more often. So what exactly is a depth map, you might wonder? Uh, I'm here to bring you out of the depth and into the shallow end. This, this uh, presentation is going to cover part one, what a depth map is, part two, where depth maps can be used, and part three, how to make depth maps. We'll cover the categories noted in parts two and three in more detail in future videos. Watch till the end to see something that, to my knowledge, has never been done before. Ooh. Now let's understand the depth map and how it can help us in the world of stereoscopic 3D photography. As the slide says, a depth map, as Webster's Dictionary defines a depth map, or Wikipedia defines a depth map as simply an image that contains information relating to the distances of seen objects from a viewpoint. Okay, so given an image, we can have another image associated with it that represents how close the objects are to the camera. So here we have, uh, you can see in the background, we have these objects are very dark, the background are all the trees, and then the, camp, the fountain in the middle is lighter, and then it gets very lighter as we get close with these uh, little flowers and vases toward the front. So that's, that's your depth map that you're gonna be looking for. Uh, if you've ever seen a raised relief map, uh, remember the ones from grade school where the mountains are all bumpy and you can run your fingers over them? Uh, this is an example of turning a, like a 2D object, a topographical map, which shows elevation numbers. We were to zoom in, we could see little numbers on here. Uh, and we can turn that into a physical 3D object by sort of extruding the depth uh, higher, the, the higher the elevation gets. So let's see, let's click to look here. Here's another image that we stuck toward the end where you can see that uh, these, the circles represent kind of the elevation going up. And you can see like, as if it were a mountain, uh, this is the, the peak of the mountain. So just looking at the images again, or the, this is kind of representation of the mountains. And if we were to consider on the left, this is the elevation of those mountains. Let's put it more in terms of computer depth maps. So for our purposes, we're generally gonna use 8-bit grayscale depth maps. So we are allowed 256 shades of gray. So over here on the left, we're gonna change our elevation to be just different shades of gray. And what we can say in this point is that uh, looking straight down uh, as if we were the sun, we're gonna say that the sun is equal to about 255, and then anything close to the sun uh, is gonna be, is gonna be closer to, to 255, right? So then as we move away from the sun, our numbers uh, further, further decrease and get darker and darker into black. Uh, and I'm just gonna show you, if we were to take a aerial photograph from Google Maps and then take a depth map, where here the dark represents the, uh, the ground and the white represents the, the, the mountains, and the gray is in between. Uh, if we were to lay this on top of uh, this depth map, then we would end up with kind of a three-dimensional object that looks uh, and feels kind of like the real California. Now, just to point out that uh, before when I was showing you, we had white being the closest to, uh, to us and black being the furthest away. You don't actually need to do that with depth maps. You know, you can also have black being the, the closest, uh, the closest forward, where white is the the most far away. Okay, so different programs will need different types of depth maps. So you'll get pretty adept at figuring out just what looks right and what looks wrong, and then when you need to flip it. And it's really easy to to reverse the depth map in Stereo Photo Maker. So here are some sample depth, uh, depth maps. On the left, we have the, the image, the, the red, green, blue, RGB, 2D image, and then we have a depth map. So here, uh, 
furthest away is just this black all in the background. And here we have kind of an extreme, uh, he's holding the bottle right there. And what we can do is just pretend like we saw before with the mountains. If you were to drape this image on the left on top of this image, it would all be kind of draped coming down from that bottle. And we would have kind of a depthy uh, relief map. Again, here's another depth map, corresponding RGB image. So the water is kind of black back there. And he's pointing this thing toward the front. So that's it's white. It's coming out close. And we're going to move along to so part two. So how can we use these depth maps? And uh, we're here for stereo 3D, right? So you're saying get to it. Well, not quite yet. Once we have this depth map, we can do a number of interesting things. What we can do is actually blur the background of our uh, 2D image. And we can do that e pretty easily in Stereo Photo Maker. Right? So we have this option, which pops up. And we can click. And if you can see, the background is getting a little bit more blurry. When I click Apply, then it's just going to change that photo. Okay. Another thing we can do is create a stereo pair from our 2D image plus the depth map, right? So creating a stereo pair, hooray, finally we're talking about 3D. So on the left is a very simple 2D image of the earth that I found on the internet. And on the right is a simple circular gradient depth map. And I'll talk about how I created that later. Notice this depth map is reversed. So in this case, black is going to be toward the, toward the viewer. So this could also be, uh, for this conversion process, we could use any kind of 2D image that we have. And if we've manually created an uh, extravagant depth map in Photoshop, um, we could be using that. But anyway, I'll talk about all that later. So here we've gone into Stereo Photo Maker, And as I said, there's an option under edit for depth map. You can do a whole bunch of really fun things in here. And this is this create 3D image from 2D depth map. So that's going to give you the uh, stereo pair. And I also talked about before uh, this reverse depth map. So sometimes I might want to use that to, to flip that image around. OK, and so if you want to grab your anaglyph glasses, you can pop them on, and you will see that we've created a pretty decent approximation of the Earth. And this is important. I always like to say that a conversion is conversion, right? Uh, so we can never create that little bit of Europe to the right uh, in this image, right? This is this piece of data in our source that we converted is just never going to be there. But we can shift it enough to make it convincing. Another thing we knew with depth maps is we can create a Facebook 3D photo. So if you've been on Facebook 3D, Facebook, you may have seen uh, on the desktop browser or the app, there's this kind of uh, little way you can easily drag the depth map and stuff across. Uh, and then you end up with this funny little, uh, oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. You end up with this, uh, this little moving image which is nice, you can drag it back and forth. But you'll see when we drag it back and forth that we're gonna be missing some information behind his head. Like we said, the source image doesn't have what the water looks like behind there. So we're kind of stuck with Facebook blurring it out for us. So that's my little cousin Seamus there. And this is the image we saw before of the fountain. Again, easily done on Facebook. And then this is one that someone else made and I just, they must have done this manually in Photoshop or something. So they took the, the 2D image album cover from an Iron Maiden album, and they just drew a depth map. And they could even create a stereo pair from this if they wanted to, because they have the, the depth map and the, and the image. So we may come back to that in a little bit. We shall see. Another thing we can do with depth maps is we can display images in the looking glass or print lenticular images. 
So we've talked about the looking glass before in NYSA Presents, and a number of us have ordered the a looking glass portrait, which is play. I'm going to show you an example on the, the older portrait display. And we can use Stereo Photo Maker or Looking Glass Factory software, or Masuji Suto has also made a web viewer, which help us view depth maps and images in the looking glass. So here's a looking glass, and I'm moving it. And up, it looks pretty good up near his head. There is a little bit of like speckling because it doesn't quite know what to do with the uh, with the the water back there. And what we've done is created 45 or more different images from that source 2D image and depth map. And now we're displaying it in this display. Um, and then this image again, we saw this bottle, and it looks a little bit. A little bit worse because we're trying to to look behind the the bottle and there's just nothing there that the system is computers trying to fill it in so if you ever want full occlusion and you truly want to look around things it's best to take a series of lenticular style photos or at least a stereo photo for better conversion oh. Okay, one more thing you can do is create depthy bottles for VR. I'm not really going to talk much about this because you're better off just taking a bunch of photos around an object and then using photogrammetry to stitch it all together. But you could use a depth map and um, for this purpose if you wanted to. And then finally, this is exciting. You can use inpainting uh, and other artificial intelligence improvements. So I mentioned, for example, before that you can never pull in that part of Europe that wasn't in the source we used for the conversion. But AI is making larger strides every day and is able to fill in the backgrounds in a way we wouldn't have thought possible even a year ago. All right, so remember this image of, <clears throat> of my cousin Seamus here. So if we look around his head, you notice that the software is able to kind of figure out, it moves a tiny bit, but it's, it's pretty good for, for it just converting. And it also, uh, this, soft, this free software, uh, which is, did I say what this was called? Yeah, this is in painting. It allows us to get that kind of effect you might see on TV documentaries. Oops. All right, so let's move on. So finally, how can we create these depth maps that I've showed you? Uh, alluded to it a little bit, we'll just step through. So the first way is you can start with a, a um, we're starting with a 2D image and we wanna make a, a depth map from it. So the first way is the most difficult, which is manually creating it in Photoshop. You're gonna create a grayscale image from scratch. Uh, that can be time consuming and requires some decent Photoshop skills. But I know at least uh, some of the folks in this meeting used to get paid to do that very thing. Uh, so another way, uh, to create a depth map is to make a gradient shape in Stereo Photo Maker or Photoshop or some other uh, image program. For example, that Earth depth map I made earlier was done using Stereo Photo Maker. So back in Stereo Photo Maker, I went to depth map. Oops. Control. I went to depth map, make depth map, and Stereo Photo Maker just gives me some different things like a cylinder or a rectangle if I wanted to do a pyramid or something, or a ball. All right, so it makes it easier, easy if you just have some kind of a basketball or a globe or something like that uh, to easily make a depth map you can use. And then the last way is to use some artificial intelligence. So I'm gonna show you something that we did with, I did with something called Midas. So this is taking a, just this 2D image we run it through this Midas program, which is free, and it does some kind of machine, applies some machine learning to it, and it comes up with this a decent depth map. It's got a fountain. It's missing those little, clicking the wrong button. It's missing those little, uh, little things in the front, but it's a decent job for, uh, for computer software, and it's getting better over time. Another method we can use is uh, modern mobile smartphones or tablets. So if you, if you have used the portrait mode on your camera app 
on the Android or iOS, you're already creating depth maps. So remember that background blurring I showed you earlier? That's the same feature you can do on phones in portrait mode because the phone has created a depth map and is using it to apply the blur. So here I'm just giving you an example from my iPhone 11. I took a portrait photo. I actually chose to kind of black out the background and the system has saved this depth map so that when I bring it into Stereo Photo Maker, it gives me this depth map already. And you can see it's a little rough and a little chunky because it's trying to kind of um, do its thing. Uh, over here, the iPhone 12 has better sensors on it. And I won't go into those, but this is one I cribbed from the Looking Glass website. So I believe Sean Freen took it. And you can see that the resolution of this depth map is a lot more detailed you know, with the scarf and everything. And so that will result in much better converted content later on down the line. And then just down below, this is another example of where I went into Stereo Photo Maker and I said, let's create a uh, stereo pair from a 2D image plus a depth map. And if you were really to, to zoom in, you can see that this, since this depth map is so rough, it kind of made some weird things on the cheek a little bit. I could probably go in here and I could clean this up around the face. In You can actually do that in Stereo Photo Maker or you can do that in Photoshop. Okay, and finally, we can create a depth map from a stereo pair. And this is really my preferred method of, of creating the depth maps, uh, if, I, if I can, if I have a stereo pair. So here I say we can use DMAG along with uh, Stereo Photo Maker. So DMAG is created by Ugo Capedo, and it's a really great program, which can be run standalone or attached to Stereo Photo Maker for seamless conversion. So once it's hooked up, you have a lot of information you can type in and uh, you may need to do some manual cleanup and some tweaking. So just like with stereo 3D photos, sometimes you'll think something's really gonna look good in 3D and it doesn't, but the same applies here. So with some practice, you can get a feel for what works and what doesn't. So here is me taking my stereo pair and this is my very first conversion. I didn't do much cleanup, but it worked out pretty well. So sometimes with this, you'll try to make a tweak and it'll just be worse and then you'll have to go back. So like with anything, a bit of trial and error um, will, will get you places. So I was curious about how this held up to the artificial intelligence. So on the top, you see me using this uh, stereo pair with DMAG, and at the bottom is the Midas. So you can see that the trees are a lot more, a lot more pronounced in the, the depth map from pair. We get these little vases in the front. So it did a lot better job, but again, not too bad for some artificial intelligence. And there are some other things to do that I'm not gonna go into, like you could go in and apply a, a blur, like a Gaussian blur or something to this in Photoshop. Um, just to make your results better. Uh, but that's it. Oh, I did say that there was one thing that had never been done. And for years, some of us have been trying to figure out how to record Facebook 3D photos. So before I showed you moving back and forth in Facebook, and I neglected to mention that in VR, when you look at that photo, you can actually see depth. So here is a video of that. We're looking at that Iron Maiden video or image from before. So in this case, this is the Oculus Quest and I've adjusted it a little bit to accommodate distortion and everything. And here we have real depth in three dimensions. And again, this was just him taking a 2D image and creating a manual depth map. So that's really it. Top level look at depth maps, what they are, uh, where they can be used and how to create them. And I'll go into depth in future videos on the usage and creation of the different categories we discussed and put it up on YouTube and hopefully get together a list of resources for the Fancy Cliff page for you for next week. Thank you very much.